A very good afternoon to all of you here. This is so amazing to see all of you come from across the country for this special occasion. I'm Aniket. I'm one of the vehicle designers here at Ultraviolet Automotive. And we are so proud to finally launch the much-awaited F77. So without further ado, So without further ado, let's give it up for our founders, Narayan Subramaniam and Neeraj Rajmohan. Thank you. Thank you, Aniket. Thank you. And a really good afternoon to one and all. We're proud to be here to talk about the F-77, and that's what we're going to be doing. But before we get rolling, there's one thing I just want all of us to keep in mind. Today, is a very special day, very special occasion. We are not here just to launch the F-77. We are here to give you a glimpse into the ultraviolet universe and into the ultraviolet future. And on that note, let's get started. So, let me start off at a point in time where this whole journey began, right? And where it's led to today. So, 2004, going back to when Neeraj and me were classmates in first year of university. So we were studying engineering back then. Not much of a clue of what the future holds in store. I, I think a lot of us resonate with that thought. And what we though found in common was a very, very strong creative technology inclination when it comes to going beyond what the syllabus has to offer. So over the next four years or so, we took part in a lot of national, international competitions which involved us building all sorts of robots, aircrafts, helicopters, hydroplanes, name it, what not. And this sort of brought together different fields of design and engineering to make it happen. Um, this required computers, it required electronics, mechanics, all of it in a very creative way to take shape. And this today is what the DNA of the company is. And what we have in common is across ultraviolet is, a, is an interest in a zero or one approach. And what do I mean by this? I think as a collective group, what we find more exciting is fundamental disruptions rather than incremental advancements. And that's all that's gone into starting from a blank sheet of paper to when the bikes come on stage in a bit, right? And today, uh, glad to be joined by a team of 100 plus people that share Yeah, so we're all here. Uh, super proud moment for us uh, to be doing this. And now, coming to what the vision of our collective group is, right? We are at a moment in time where, fortunately, we have the opportunity to influence or define the future of mobility. And that is what we are laser focused on for the foreseeable future. And that is our vision at Ultraviolet. To add to what Narayan is saying, so I think when we started in 2016, right, uh, there were multiple opportunities for us. We looked at the entire electric mobility sector and you know, we were thinking, what, what is it that we want to be addressing? Um, there were opportunities in you know, electric scooters, electric motorbikes, hypercars, electric aircrafts. So the question really for us, was for us is, like, what, what is it that we want to be working on? And you know, through this entire process of understanding the space, what we came to realize was we want to be working on performance motorcycles for two very, very important reasons. One was because motorcycles are an emotion. What do we mean by that, right? Like all of us at some point in the past, you ask anyone, someone who's even 70 years old or 80 years old, they'll remember the motorcycle that they owned. There is something very special about motorcycles that it goes beyond you know, a simple means of commute from A to B, which is what most other vehicles are. Right? But when it comes to motorcycles, we all aspire to own particular motorcycles. We look up to them in movies, in cinemas. In, you know, we even have posters of these on our walls as kids. So that's what's special about motorcycles. Right? And that's what we're talking about when we say that motorcycles are an emotion. We'll get a little more into this a little later. The second reason that, you know, was, uh, that we got into motorcycles was because 
the technology simply didn't exist. And for most people, that comes across as you know a, a barrier. For us, that represented a challenge, right? And that's something we really, really appreciate. And you know, we have the entire team that we have today is built around this notion that we will take on very, very difficult problems. What do I mean by that? I can just elaborate a little more. Typically, when you see electric vehicles, we're talking about power levels of you know anywhere from three to ten kilowatts of peak power. What we are talking about are motorcycles that are putting out anywhere from 30 to 50 kilowatts of peak power. That's a 10x increase in power and current. And as a consequence of that, from you know, if you go back to physics, like I square R, you have losses that are an exponential factor, right? You're talking about 10x increase in power and current. You're talking about 100x increase in losses and efficiency, right? So to solve such problems requires a very fundamental requires fundamental innovation, ground up. That's what Narayan was talking about when he said the zero or one approach. And that's exactly what we have done today. So we are quite proud of the team that we have today because some of these problems have been really, really hard to take on. And it requires a special kind of culture, a special kind of focus, and a special kind of attitude to get out what we have today. And what you're about to see now is essentially the ultraviolet attitude, the energy, the passion towards product development. What does it take to be the best? Dedication. What does it take to be the best? Dedication, inspiration, introspection, or maybe it's just gallons of perspiration. No, really, what does it take? Loads of practice? Perseverance and almost insane passion? Or is it all a matter of patience? It takes all of this to be the best and more. You need to give it all you've got, and then some, constantly, consistently, countlessly, over and over and over again, till you break out of your own barriers. Where perfection becomes just a part of the process. And winning is no longer determined by a finish line. Yeah, so that gives, gives me goosebumps watching it. I think it's, it's, in a nutshell, the last five, six years of effort, passion, energy, like I said, that's gone into it. And like you just heard, 
our race to the start has just begun, right? And at this point, what we want to talk about is the core essence of a motorcycle. A motorcycle, like Neeraj mentioned earlier, is, is more of an ideology, it's an emotion. It's not just the product that takes you from A to B, it's something that takes you beyond, right? So we went through a process of about one year of design and research, and for us, the F-77 needed to do two things. Needed to convey the futuristic mentality of all of us, also needed to convey a sense of timelessness. And I think after a period of one year is when the sketch that you see behind me here was selected as the base for the concept that we now have, right? And coming to the motorcycle aspect of the F-77, we all know as motorcyclists, there are a few key emotions that all of us have in mind when it comes to riding. For some of us, it is an identity, an extension of our own persona. For some of us, it's the sheer thrill of riding a performance machine. For some others, it's the freedom. You want that weekend escape after a hectic weekday schedule, right? And for some others, it's focus. It's all about staying connected with your machine. Now, let me dig in a little deeper into how each of these emotions have played a huge role in sculpting the F-77. Now, coming to the identity itself. So we all know when it comes to highly emotional products, the first, the first decision is mentally made when the, first, when the first time you see the product for real, right? And that is where the whole design process plays a driving role. And for us, the design process also had to make a statement. And what you see is representative of that statement through what we call the Ultra V signature lights. Now, this is as much a piece of art as it has been an engineering marvel. And this is something that we've gotten into the last minutest of details. And what you see behind me is sort of all the, all the parts coming together to now have a very distinct identity for the motorcycle. Now, the headlight also needs to represent the intent of a motorcycle, and we believe we've sort of got it spot on. Now, moving on to being one with your machine, right? This, unlike, unlike four-wheelers to a large extent, when it comes to two-wheelers, the whole experience is defined by the rider and the machine coming together as one synchronous unit. And a lot of thought process has gone into how we made this happen. Uh, for starters, all of us loved sports motorcycles. We've all wanted to own, at some point, a very sporty motorcycle, and also wished it was just as comfortable to use as an everyday vehicle as well. Now, this was a hard bridge for us to cross, and I think we've done a very good job here. What we've done is, when you look at the whole proportions, the ergonomics of the motorcycle, we've sort of increased the handlebar height just a tad compared to conventional sports motorcycles and lowered the seat height just a bit to the max limit possible. As a consequence, we've got a great riding triangle, which is conducive to, you know, like really let loose and have fun on the track. And at the same time, you want to use it as an everyday commuter. It is just very, very convenient as well. Now, all of this torque coming into play also needs very precise handling. So the next part that we're talking about is the width of the handlebars as well. So we've sort of had a lot of studies done here and designed this just right to get all of that torque available to you with precise handling in every sort of use case or scenario. Right, so now what you see behind me is just how, how much effort has gone into sculpting this machine, right? This, this is a very important process in the design flow, sort of bridging between creative design and engineering. So, what happens here is about a four to six month process where the clay is hand sculpted. We have riders of multiple dimensions sitting on the bike, giving us feedback. And what you see here is how adaptive the F-77 is from a height range of about five foot four to about six foot four is what you see here. Right, and then talking about what the design means to us. For us, the future was bold, progressive, and sophisticated. And that meant that very intent has to be reflected in the exterior design of the motorcycle as well. And what you see here, and what I probably encourage you to maybe look at in a little more detail, uh, you will not find a single bolt head or screw visible 
anywhere on the design of the motorcycle, which goes back to our philosophy derived from aviation, right? As streamlined as possible, as futuristic as possible. And there are not too many other products that can stake this claim, which also gives you a sense of how difficult this process has been for us to sort of get in place. And uh, the other aspect of any well-designed premium product is, is, of course, the attention to detail. When it comes to a motorcycle especially, every single part on the bike talks to us. It says something to us. And we've sort of kept all of those factors in mind right from the rider footrest or the pillion footrest to more complex things like the headlamp unit or the tail lamp unit. The same attention to detail has gone into every single aspect on the motorbike. Now, coming to the next aspect or the next emotion, which is thrill. Right? I, I don't think I need to elaborate much on thrill. Let's just look at what we've got in store. Yeah, that's what this machine can do. Uh, 0 to 60 in less than 3 seconds, 0 to 100 in less than 8 seconds, and a top speed north of 150 kilometers. And talking about thrill, we just threw this in here. Let's look at a flyby of the bike. Yes, so that's the, the whole thrill aspect of the electric motorcycle. Now, coming to freedom, a very core emotion for all of us that love motorcycles, right? Freedom is being able to go on that impulsive ride. You've had a really busy week, you just want to take off on the weekend. The F-77 allows you to do that. The next aspect is freedom from range anxiety. And off late, there's been a lot of talk around electric vehicles being predominantly urban vehicles. So we took it as a challenge to see how far we could push that riding radius. And what we are looking at is equivalent to a full tank of petrol on a conventional motorcycle, close to 300 kilometers per single charge. Now, of course, the next topic related to range is how do I charge my motorcycle? We've got two options. We've got a standard charger and we've got a boost charger as well. Now, all of these specs are going to be available to you on the website. The boost charger can do over 70 kilometers per hour of charge. Now, what we've also kept in mind from a motorcycle perspective is We've designed some really cool panniers that are able to facilitate how you carry the boost charger with you on a long ride. More details on this later. The next aspect is how simple it is to charge. So we've got all the smart tech built into the vehicle, into the chargers. All you need is just a plug point. It's as simple as charging your mobile, your laptop, and then it's, it's a plug and recharge process. So this applies to any sort of 15 amp outlet, it could be something in your basement, it could be something you uh, encounter at a daba on a longer ride. All of this should be able to facilitate recharging the vehicle. The next aspect is focus. When we talk about focus, we talk about a connected experience between the rider and the machine. But when we started defining focus, we wanted to speak about being connected one level deeper, being connected not just to the machine, but through the whole ownership cycle of the F-77. So this is where our F-77 mobile application comes into play. Everything from ride analytics, diagnostics, uh, fine-tuning your performance requirements, locked on your vehicle, all of it and more available on the app. This itself warrants a two-hour discussion, but we'll keep it rolling for now. And the other part of being focused is all about your state of mind. 
you might be on a weekend ride, you want to glide through the valleys, or you might be on your way to work on a Monday morning, you want to combat the traffic, or you might be on a racetrack and you just want to go ballistic. And these are the three ride modes on the F-77. We've got the glide, the combat, and the ballistic mode. Yeah, I think the next part of what we want to talk about is, you know, what really enables all of this, right? So we spoke about the performance, we spoke about aspects of, you know, the focus, uh, the identity, but all of this has a very foundational basis, right, which has to be very robust, and that's where the safety, the testing comes into picture, and that's something that we want to focus on, right? When we talk about safety, we are talking about safety that kicks in in a heartbeat, in a fraction of a second. What we have on our systems today, whether it's the battery management system, the vehicle control unit, or you know the entire vehicle itself as an integrated unit, we're talking about protection mechanisms and protocols that kick in in microseconds. If a typical heartbeat is 800 milliseconds, what we're talking about is eight microseconds, right? One ten thousandth the amount of time that it takes for a typical heartbeat. And this applies across the vehicle. Right? And these are systems that are constantly running. You don't need to be wondering or you know, thinking about these systems. These are always running in the background. They're ensuring that you, are, you have a safe ride experience. Right? Now, you could still ask us, you know, what does this really mean on the road? Right? You're talking about electrical systems, electronic systems, vehicle control units, battery management systems. But what does this really mean on the road? Right? And that's something that we spent a lot of time on as well. Right? This is, if you notice, there's a constant theme that we follow a very uncompromising approach to all of these things. We spend a lot of time, it, we go into a lot of detail to solve some of these problems and challenges. Right? So one of the other things that we did is we spent a lot of time on testing and validating these vehicles. Right? And it's not just from a simulation perspective. These are, sim these are actually test cases that we put the vehicles through. While the F-77 is predominantly you know, designed to be an urban sports motorcycle, what we have subjected the vehicles to is really we push them to their limits. Right? What you can see is uh, you know, several times the wheel is not co in contact with the, with the ground. Right? You can see the terrain that we've really pushed the vehicles to. So we've gone over and above to sort of push these vehicles to their very limits to get to where we are today. And I think it's, it's next stop is probably Mars. <laughs> yeah, that's the get only place where we haven't tested the vehicles. We have really pushed it to its, to, to its very limit. Um, and you know, there's another foundational aspect that I want to talk about next. So you see all of this insane power and engineering, and that is pr provided. You know, that power is provided by this motor, right? This motor that we spoke about in 2019, um, we spoke about you know about 90 newton meters of torque. Today, we are over 100 newton, meet newton meters of torque with this motor, right? And we've really pushed it to its limit. In fact, you know, most of these motors are used in aerospace applications, and we've put them on a motorcycle. And that's really talking about what, what is capable from this motor. In fact, when we talk about this torque, it's really hard to explain it on the screen, you know, um, because you really need to ride it to get that sense of it. Because with the flick of a wrist, all of that torque is available across the entire RPM range, right? And that's something that is never seen on a typical IC engine motorcycle, and that's where the experience really goes beyond a typical IC engine bike. The other aspect, the other foundational aspect to being able to provide this kind of insane power on this motorcycle is the battery pack. Right? What we're talking about, this is the SRB10. This is the largest battery pack on a motorcycle in India today. Right? This is, this is 10.3 kilowatt hour in terms of capacity, 307 kilometers IDC range. In fact, this battery pack is so advanced, we get a lot of requests from other industries. We're talking about requests coming in from the aerospace industry, from the military side for these battery packs. But first, the F-77, and that's our focus, right? 
So when we refer to this battery pack, we usually refer to, as a, refer to it as a battery pack from the future. And you know, um, you'll get a sense of why we talk about that. And I think at this point, we want to showcase what our vision of the next foreseeable future is. So let's fly right into the future. Yeah, and we are just getting started. So on that note, let's turn the lights off, clear the runways, and get the airstrike on display. We need the runway clear because coming right up is the F-77 Shadow.
<laughs> and up next, we've got the poster boy of the lot, the F-77 laser. Bikes are going to be here. There's a lot more bikes on display, not to worry. Cool. So that is the F-77 lineup for you. The laser, the airstrike, and the shadow. Cool. Now, let, let's, let's talk about what these motorcycles mean in a deeper context. Thank you. We are talking about 2930 kilowatts of power. We're talking about 95, and like Neeraj mentioned, 100 newton meters of torque and, of course, the largest battery pack on two wheels. Now, add to that, you have the ballistic modes, and you have preload adjustable suspensions, and a whole host of other features as well. Now, the important question, the price point. Now, this vehicle is called the F-77 Recon. Recon stands for the largest range possible on this lineup. And the F-77 Recon today, ex-showroom at 4.55 lakhs. <laughs> and we did mention we have multiple variants. So we've got the F-77 original, that comes in with the second largest battery pack on two wheels. And this X showroom price at, wait for it, 3.8 lakhs. 
Now, that is just the tip of the iceberg. I think there are a few important aspects we want to speak about because we are just at the beginning of the electric revolution. So, Neeraj? Yeah. I think, um, just a moment. <laughs> yeah, guys, relax. Um, so I think there are other aspects, very practical aspects of going electric that we also want to talk about, right? Um, while, you know, there's, you know, the ex showroom price that Narayan mentioned, there are other things that we want to also discuss that relate to the economics of owning an electric vehicle, right? I want to run through three scenarios now, right? Some of these may seem, you know, slightly outrageous. I'm comparing it to the first scenario, which is, you know, um, owning a petrol bike, which, you know, costs roughly two lakh rupees, right? Now, you may be, you, already, you probably own a motorcycle in this segment, or you're thinking about buying an, a regular petrol motorcycle for two lakhs. I just want to take you through what the ownership costs are over the next five years, right? The first thing is, if you talk about a monthly fuel spend, right? This is, these are actual numbers. If you actually think about how much you spend on a monthly basis, if you ride anywhere from, you know, 1,000 to 1,500 kilometers a month, which is a very average use case, then you're spending roughly about 4,000 rupees on, on the fuel, right? And you're talk I'm talking about monthly fuel expenses, right? And if you see that over a year, you're talking about roughly 50,000 rupees, you know, this kind of vehicle, I'm assuming, you know, anywhere from 35 to 37 kilometers per liter, that kind of mileage, right? And what happens with service? Roughly two or three times a year you get it serviced, you're spending overall about 10,000 rupees, right? Now, if you take all of this and you take a sort of five-year estimate in terms of how much you're spending on a typical motorcycle, you're roughly at about three lakhs, ru three lakh rupees on this kind of segment in this type of motorcycle, right? Now let's consider another scenario, which is a motorcycle which is higher priced, you know, a four lakh rupee motorcycle, right? Now obviously, um, higher CC motorcycles come with lower um, mileage. You're talking about 25 to 30 kilometers per liter. So your fuel expenses for the same number of kilometers goes up. You're spending roughly 5,000 rupees a month, right? Your maintenance also goes up to about 15,000, you know, a year. And your overall spend is about 3.75 lakhs over a five-year period. Now just keep these two numbers in mind. When we talk about the F77, right, we're talking about the highest variant that is the Recon, right, with an uh, upfront, you know, price of 4.55 lakhs. If you look at energy costs, it costs less than one-tenth of what you would spend on petrol to cover the same distance. I'm still talking the same 1,500 kilometers a month. You can cover that in less than 400 rupees a month, right? So this is a major difference because of, because of the improvement in the efficiencies, right? You're talking about the entire drivetrain, you're talking about the charging, you're talking about the battery pack. So because of that kind of efficiency, your entire year spend is about 5,000 bucks on, you know, the energy. And that's kind of ridiculous when you compare it to uh, the petrol expenses, right? The other part of this, even the maintenance expenses are lower because what we're talking about is pretty much a solid state machine, right? There are very few moving parts. The only things that, you know, really require service are, you know, the consumables, the things like the brake pads, which are really based on usage, right? So even the Maintenance expenses are roughly one third of what you would ex expect on, you know, uh, equivalent category motor motorcycle. And if you look at this over a five year period, you're talking about like an expense of about 50,000. So what you really see here is that it is more economical to own an F77 and use it as compared to a motorcycle, a petrol motorcycle that costs half as much. And that's really what I'm talking about. Of course, the immediate next question would be, you know, fine, you know, you've spoken about the savings over five years, you've spoken about the up upfront cost. So what does it mean to me now, right? What does that entail? And that's where we've lined up some very interesting financing options. So today, when we, you know, um, talk about the right away price, you're talking about a roughly 10,000 rupee right away price for both of the motorcycles, about 9,500 rupees a month on the F77 original and about 11,000 rupees a month on the F77 Recon. So that's what we've got in store for you.
the question that comes after this is, obviously, when am I going to get my bike, right? And that's what we're getting to right now. So in terms of deliveries, right? So this is, again, something interesting, uh, very different from what you would typically expect. Um, we're starting out the deliveries of the motorcycles in Bangalore in January. Um, the rest of the country happens through the, next, through the entire year itself. Different cities are going to be targeting in different quarters. And there's the other part, which is there is a lot of, you know, there are a lot of people waiting for these motorcycles in the rest of the world. And that's something that is very inverted. If you typically see a, you know, global product launch, India is not among the first in the list. And that's something that's different here. The rest of the world is going to be waiting. We are first getting these F-77s out here in India. Coming to, you know, how are you going to book it? How are you going to order it? So um, all of the bookings and all of the configuration options are going to be available on the website starting tomorrow, 6 PM. So that's where you can really configure your bike, finalize your booking, finalize your order. And it's all going to be available on ultravalet.com. May we have the riders on stage, please? All right. Now, there's one last thing. So this was something that came up as more of a internal desire or exercise to see how far we can push the limits of the F-77 from a tech, creative expression, and design perspective. And we sort of wanted to make a one-off vehicle for ourselves, right? And I think over time, <laughs> over time, we, we thought, why not celebrate what Ultraviolet stands for? We stand for bringing the future ahead of its times. We stand for the highest degrees of creative expression. We stand for tech. And as a tribute to these three aspects, we've got a very special series of 77 only limited edition vehicles. Escape velocity attained. The limited edition F-77 is not a motorcycle. It is a statement. A statement that takes off with a superlative. A statement that doesn't shy away from flying into uncharted airspace. A statement brimming with innovation and creative expression. These 77 bespoke units embody the very core of what we at Ultraviolet stand for. And now, 77 of you will take command of these time machines and redefine the future, one ballistic moment at a time.
limited edition F77, each one uniquely numbered from 001 to 077, and that's about it.